<sighs> Good morning. Where are, ooh, yes, okay, so Matthew 18, we'll be chat, finishing up the chapter this morning. Starting in verse 31. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Oftentimes we get hurt by people. And good morning to everybody. I see all you guys chiming in. It's always good to see you. Oftentimes we get hurt by people. And there's a very, very, very human response which is, when is enough enough? And oftentimes, you know, we want to cut people off. and We want to call it quits. But he says, no, 70 times seven. Now, we're not supposed to start counting and get to 490 and call it a day. It was supposed to be a, a number that we knew wasn't achievable, that, you know, I just have to keep on forgiving people. Now, we can read expanded accounts of this where it talks about, you know, if a brother comes apologizing, and that's part of it, if, if it seems like the person's authentically repentant, then we have to forgive them. And it says, again, 70 times 7. And, uh, I don't know, I'm just thinking, you know, the, the rabbis taught three times. Three times was enough. I think they use Amos 1, 3, and 2, 6 kind of was their, their idea of once the third time you've forgiven someone for a sin, then you just got to let them go. But we see 70 times 7. Now, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Ooh, whew, there we go. So Jesus gives us a story now because I don't want to forgive people when I've been hurt by them, um, especially when you've been hurt multiple times. And maybe people have done really mean things to you. They've done something that's it's just hurt you really bad. And so what about in those cases? Well, Jesus then goes on to tell a parable. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like, so there's how you know it's a parable. He starts them off that way. It's like, a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he uh, be sold with his wife and children that all that they had and that the payment might be made. And the servant fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me. I will pay you. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion and released him and forgave him in the debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat saying, pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him saying, have patience with me and I'll pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw that what had been done, they were gr very grieved and came and told their master all that, he, that had been done. Then his master, after he called him and said, you wicked servant, I forgave you all the debt because you begged me. Should you not also have compassion on your fellow servant, just as I have had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due him. So my heavenly father also will do to each of you from his heart. Uh, so my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Now, it's a straightforward parable, but there is some depth and deeper understanding that we can have by just pulling out a few of the uh, 
um, dare I say, old fashioned or things that maybe aren't, you know, our day and age and help us bring it to a modern standard, this maybe will paint a different picture for you. So first off, we have this, this owner of accounts, right? This uh, certain king, even. I mean, he's a king. He's, he's wealthy. He's rich. He's powerful. And he has so much money that he doesn't even realize that someone owes him 10,000 talents until he goes to do the books. Now, it's not supposed to show that he doesn't know a lot. It just shows that he's so rich. This is a rich king. But the money is owed. Now, let me do a little math for you. A talent in Jesus' time was approximately 75 pounds. Now, 16 years labor, okay? So it would take 16 years. I had a math thing. I did this in church and I actually had a picture with all the equivalencies, but it would take 16 years to build up a, a talent of denarii, 75 pounds of denarii, adding them all up. So this guy owed 10,000 talents. So going by the average daily worker, he owed 160,000 years of pay. If someone makes 40 grand a year, it's, it's a, you know, simple, humble, middle worker pay. That's $6.4 billion. So we need to keep this because the disciples, when he throws 10,000 talents out there, they know how much money that is. But we lose it, you know, as we, I think, you know, I lose it. I, you, you can answer for yourself, but I forget sometimes when you throw out the terms talents and denarii and whatnot. It doesn't, you know, hit realism with me until I sit down and think about the math. So, so this guy owed 160,000 years wages. You do the math for whatever you make or made. And the guy begs him saying, oh Lord, have patience with me and I'll pay you it all back. Now let's be honest. I don't think that this man understands the depravity of his state. I don't think he recognizes. You are in such debt you could never pay it back. I'm sorry. Maybe there are a few humans alive today who could. But let's just talk about us, the kind of people Jesus was trying to talk to. You can't pay back $6.4 billion. So if you beg and tell someone, I'll pay you back, I think it shows that either you're an outright liar or you still don't understand your depravity. You don't understand the debt you owe. Now, obviously this is all spiritual. And that king is our great king, the Lord. And if you think you can pay him back, you don't understand what you owe. You don't actually comprehend how far you fall short of the glory of God. But, the king forgave him the debt. It says he forgave him the debt. He released him and said, you don't have to pay me anything. Sounds familiar, huh? It's the gospel. You don't have to pay back that debt. You couldn't pay back the debt if you tried to pay back the debt. But now, this guy goes and he finds a man who has wronged him and owes him 100 denarii. And he is unwilling to work with that man, throws him in a debtor's prison. You know how the story ends. We read it, right? And the king comes back furious about this because I forgave you 10,000 talents and now you cast this person away who owed you 100 talents. But now, church, remember this. Oh, sorry, 100 denarii, I said talents. 10,000 talents, 100 denarii. A denarii was a day's wage. You would earn a denarii a day 
if you were an average worker. That's what I based my numbers off of is a denarii a day. So now, again, if that's a hundred days. So if you made 40 grand a year, that's like 13 to $16,000. Now, once again, none of us, I think here could repay a, a debt of 4 billion, right? Or 6 billion. Um, so then the next question is this, how many of us here watching and listening and me can just whatever, you know, kind of just, yeah, no big deal when we are robbed of over $10,000, $15,000. Would that hurt you financially? If you had $15,000 taken from you, this is the emphasis of this parable. Is that sometimes we think about just the fact that this guy had been forgiven much and he wouldn't forgive this other man of little. The contrast. But the little wasn't so little, was it? It was 15 grand, modern day. It wasn't like he threw him in a debtor's prison over a dollar or over $10. People get thrown in debtor's prison, you know, back then for 15 grand. It's like, no, that's a big deal, isn't it? But wait, back it up. Why is Jesus telling us this parable? Because Peter came and said, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him. You see, we are called to forgive people. And it's not just petty stuff like a dollar. It's like $15,000 forgiveness things. Because Jesus says, I know you've been hurt. I know you've been wronged. Maybe horrible, mean, wicked things were done. But in contrast, to the great debt that I am forgiven. This does look kind of petty, but in reality, it's not petty. It's something serious. And we're not called to forgive the easy things. God Almighty has called us to forgive the hard things to forgive. To say $15,000, it's okay. I've been forgiven more. Now, I, I'm not saying that you don't settle your business accounts in a wise manner and all this stuff. God speaks stewardish. This is a parable to teach us about spiritual things. But once again, I mean, I think that helps paint the picture a little better. We're not talking about just forgiving someone of, you know, oh, it's okay that you got frustrated with me. No, we're talking about like evil. We're talking about like really being treated awfully and really being betrayed and hurt. You know, we're talking about forgiving adultery. We're talking about forgiving abuse. We're talking about slander. We're talking about horrid accusations and theft and all those other things. Now, forgiveness does not mean that we allow ourselves to be put in that position again necessarily. The abused wife, right? It, it it doesn't mean that you put yourself in back into a dangerous position. But we absolutely have to forgive people. Now, my suggestion is you work on forgiveness first, and then decide the course of action second. Oh yes, in the abusive situation. Wisdom would say a, a period of separation is okay and safe. But before you make your final decision, before you make the final course of action of how this is all going to play out, you need to ask yourself if you've forgiven the person. And if they're a, a lost sinner and a wretch, well, you can forgive them and recognize that they're just a lost sinner. And that's, I can understand that they don't know Jesus and they're just for it's a Christian that's hurt you. Well, either they're in backslidden rebellion or they're going to work through it. And if they're going to work through it, 
Well, I would say forgiveness should be paired with reconciliation, that they show the desire and there's a sincerity to work through things. But the emphasis is this one last time. This unforgiving servant, it wasn't a petty thing that he struggled forgiving. It was a grievous thing. But still the king came and said, I have forgiven you so much more. I have forgiven you so much more. Why can you not then forgive them? So, heavy but true. We can uh, ease up a bit tomorrow as we go into chapter 19 and talk about divorce. So, that's it though. Word of God, it is profitable for all things that pertain to life and godliness, right? It's what we've got. He's given us all that we need so we can handle these real life problems that we face. And so there you guys go, forgive people. And if you have unforgiveness in your heart, that's a you problem. Forgiveness really doesn't matter with them. It's really all about you. You can forgive people and make wise decisions afterwards, but you still need to forgive people. So, oh, tomorrow is Saturday. Hmm, what am I doing tomorrow? I need to be consistent, right? Either don't do Saturdays or do Saturdays. I need to make up my mind. I'll take Saturday off. Monday, we start chapter 19. So there we go. All right, God bless you guys. I will see you guys around.